Good afternoon. I'm David Talbot, Managing Director and Head of Research here at Red Cloud Securities. Our next presenter is Catalin Kilofs Liski, President and CEO, and Robert Sinitz, Exploration Manager, who just joined Goldplay Mining today. Goldplay is advancing its, adv its copper gold projects in both the Golden Triangle BC and a past producing site in Portugal. Catalin and, and uh, Robert, you will have 15 minutes uh, to present, and then we'll have a five minute Q&A session at the end. So take it away. Thanks, David, and uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining us on this presentation. It's uh, very exciting for us to be telling the Goldplay story, which is a very young company. Uh, so don't be blamed if you don't know about Goldplay, but we'll try to give you a bit of background on the company. Um, we will be making some uh, forward-looking statements during the presentation. So uh, I'll remind you there is associated with that. Uh, who is behind Goldplay? Uh, outside myself, uh, which I founded a company, as I said, less than a year ago, uh, I was involved prior to founding Goldplay with Tudor Gold, uh, right at the time when I uh, was myself and Ken Konkin, uh, the 25 cents mark and Tudor Gold of course around to four bucks become one of the largest discoveries of the decade. Um, and uh, I was in charge with really get the company financed and get it trading. And uh, Ken was in charge of making things happen on the ground. So big success. And uh, I do have lots of other successes in my, in my career. So I decided to create a new company where we put together the best of people, the best of projects that hopefully have the chance to give a significant shareholder return. Uh, and the best of investors. We started with a very good group of investors and we welcome new investors every single day. Um, running the company on the board level, it's Dr. Deepa Mahotra, who's a world-renowned geologist, somebody very highly regarded in the industry. Uh, Jose Mario Branco runs our Portuguese operations and uh, he is a veteran. He's run Landin mining operations for seven years in Europe and we are very glad to have him. Also joining today actually is Robert Sanders, who is head of uh, exploration for BC. Uh, and we are very excited. Rob has a tremendous track record. He was involved in many, many big projects, including the development of Oyutoglu in Mongolia. Uh, but he's also worked on more early stage projects and uh, we are very happy to have him join us. On the advisory board side, uh, I'm very happy to have Walter Coase, the CEO of Skina, both as a shareholder, he owns shares in Goldplay and he's invested his own dollars in the company. Uh, and alongside him, we have Ken Brank, who was a senior executive at Newmont. Jorge Ramiro, he's founded uh, Reina Silva, Reina Gold, so very successful. Adam Travis as well. So, and really all those guys are shareholders and uh, we are very fortunate for their guidance. What's Goldplay about? Really by design, when we put together the company, I wanted to have a suite of projects in BC that hopefully have the potential to make a world-class discovery. We were not looking for projects that have been, you know, tried many years and want to look the smart guys that we're going to make it work. No, we were looking for something hopefully that has the potential to make a major discovery. And uh, we have projects both in the Golden Triangle, but also in Southwest BC, where we have a project called Big Frank. And we are very convinced based on the results and previous work that does have that potential to yield to a major discovery even this summer as we embark in a, in a maiden drilling campaign was never done on this project before. And to counterbalance this you know, high risk early stage uh, profile, we got a, a quite a nice suite of projects in Portugal. And those are brownfields, those are projects and those are historic mines that produced both copper and gold over the last 20, 30 years. They've been kind of sitting idle since and it's only now recently with the Portuguese government opening up the mining space due to the need of European Union to have metal production within European Union and us basically getting those projects directly from the government through our contacts in the country. So a very unique opportunity both in BC and Portugal and we'll be just talking a little bit about both. Uh, as I mentioned, been trading uh, since April of last year. We've been a fairly liquid. We've probably changed over about one third of the shares of the company. Uh, we've never really had uh, you know, much cheap stock per se. There's been no free shares. Everybody put money in the company, including myself and people in the board. So we are well aligned with all the shareholders. The company has about $2.2 million in cash. 
about one of the third of the stock is held through uh, brokers, mostly at Raymond James in Vancouver and others in Toronto. Um, Scotty West is really our main project that we started the company with. Um, it sits right next to the Grand Duke Mine, it's bordering Scotty Resources in proximity of Pritium Gold, it's bordering Teuton and, and QX Exploration. So a very attractive land position. And again, has ne really never been worked on. Uh, we, we're sitting very close to infrastructure within basically less than 15 kilometers from an existing mill less than 10 kilometers from power line and roads and less than 50 kilometers from a deep water port. So should there be a discovery, it's a good place to have that discovery. Uh, as I mentioned before, no work has been done before. We've done an initial program last summer, uh, which uh, we got some really good results up to six gram gold, over 100 gram silver. So definitely lots going on on the project. But I think, you know, um, Going back to our strategy, we really felt that Scotty currently does not have that potential of a major discovery. So we were in a hunt for that project. And late last year, uh, we've acquired two new projects in BC, uh, Big Frank and Goldstorm South. And those are not in the Golden Triangle, but in a prolific district in the Southwest BC. Uh, and why are we so excited? Um, Historical work was scattered. You know, so a few people have done a little bit of work in 1980s and and a bit before, but nobody has really consolidated the entire district before Goldberg got involved. There's some interesting results here historically. Uh, one I want to point out to you: there's a channel sample that was done over two meters. The, basically, the results were staggering: 85 grams gold per ton, 50 grams per silver, and 1% copper. And then sporadic drilling that's been done here and there, it turned up to half ounce gold. So, you know, as we prepare for the drilling campaign this summer, we said, no, let's first do our own sampling to make sure that those results are in, indeed there. And we are very pleased with the results that we've achieved in September of last year. Those are published already. We've got in the new vase that we sample up to 1.1 kilo silver up to one ounce gold, up to 4% copper. So all those are really encouraging because when you put them together with the historical work, it does provide enough confidence to say, let's drill it. And that's exactly what we are planning to do this coming summer. Company has already money in the bank uh, allocated for this project, about one and a half million to start. Uh, and Rob joining us today, uh, it's really gonna be his main focus on designing the program, executing the program, and hopefully delivering results like he's done with many other companies that he's been involved with. So we're very excited about that. The other project that was part of the portfolio that we acquired together with Big Frank, it's a gold from South. It's a big copper gold porphyry. Uh, that's something we will not be drilling this summer, but we'll be doing some work. And, uh, and the likes of Freeport are actually interested in this project. So we will be discussing ways to maybe partner in JV so we can get um, forward with the project. Let's talk a little bit about Portugal. Um, in Portugal, as I mentioned, we have more brownfields projects, projects that have for most part produced before. It's really two sets of projects we have there. They're sitting in kind of two different companies that we control in Portugal. One includes a high-grade historical underground copper mine that produced that uh, pretty good copper grade, two to three percent copper, and then a more early stage gold project. The second set of projects in Portugal include an open pit copper mine that produced at over one percent copper open pit, a gold copper project, and you know a couple more gold projects there that all have historic results, very very attractive. So what's the plan? What do we really want to do in Portugal? And for people that don't know much about Portugal, um, Portugal has been ranked by Fraser Mining Institute in 2019, the fifth most attractive mining jurisdiction. And I can attest to that. You know, I've had many uh, meetings with the Portuguese government officials, and I can tell you by the fact that uh, we've actually signed a new concession agreement late last year, they are genuinely in favor of mining. Uh, the new mining law has been published last year, and you can see genuine desire to push those four projects forward. Uh, why? Because you know, currently 
Europe is importing over 90% of its, for example, copper. So, you know, they really have to move and encourage uh, within European metal production that's happening right now. Uh, I would be talking just a little bit about one flagship project we have in, in Portugal, it's the underground copper mine. This project sits basically on paved roads next to towns. Uh, it's already a disturbed site. It's uh, the plant buildings and the potential mill are on site still. Um, only probably one third or less of the known mineralized system has been mined. So there's significant you know, existing kind of no mineralization that we would be going after. And uh, our objective is to come up with a plan to basically put this project on track to production restart. As I mentioned, grades are great up to 3% copper. Um, unlike BC, uh, it's, it's a beautiful place to be having a mine, you know, to be able to go and people go every day at home. You can go to a hotel and 20 minutes later you are there. It's great, a full cell signal, paved roads, uh, cheap power. So it's, it's, it's great. Um, the, before we, we put forward the plans for Portugal, even though we have a lot of historical information, we basically said, look, let's do some drilling to make sure that what's historically been encountered is there. So where we can plan our program. So we've done an initial prog program of uh, four holes. Uh, we announced the first one uh, a few days ago, and we are very pleasantly surprised to encounter a good gold intercept in a previously unknown gold system. This mine has only been mined for copper, yet we've hit two meters of 5.8 grams gold near surface. So that's great because now, you know, it provides additional uh, possible improved economics as we move the project on the path to a production restart. Um, we have three more holes that have not been released yet because we are still waiting for results from the labs and like everywhere else, uh, we are faced with the same delays like everybody's facing. Uh, we also have a nice uh, gold project that's kind of sitting on trend with a copper project, arguably same mineralized system because they are literally similar type of mineralization and very close to each other. Uh, this is a more gold focused project, uh, a historic hole there intercepted five meters of 7.9 grams gold and 0.6% copper. Again, near surface, those are really good grades. We have drilled one hole there too this, uh, this year actually in January. Uh, so we have not received results yet. And with that also the objective would be to uh, put it on path to advancing. And I'm not gonna be talking about the second set of projects. Those are you know, another area which we control. It's a big area. Uh, that has at least four projects there. These are projects that will probably find the JV partner because you know part of our focus this year as we've rushed to grow the company, we're now trying to find our focus. And BC I think will be big frank um, as a near term focus and Portugal is the one that we are already drilling. And then for the rest, we will be trying to get other joint venture partners to help us move those projects forward and create additional shareholder value um, through partnering uh, with, with various groups. Um, the one project that's included in this second set of projects is a, a past producing open pit copper mine, which you see in this picture. Uh, very good grades, open pit of again over 1% copper. Same story like the other one, less than one third mine. And nothing has been done since 86 in this case. Why? Because again, if you may recall, just only recently uh, Portugal has decided to encourage mining and why not. So those projects effectively were sitting in the government uh, coffers and, um, and uh, we are the first to um, control them and advance them to a path uh, for near term production. And I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, I think we're just almost on time for our presentation today. Uh, feel free to ask questions and uh, if you don't have questions right now, we're always available. My contact information is available here and easy to find both on going on the website. My personal phone number is there and my personal email is there and I welcome your inquiries.
Great. Thank you very much, sir. We are right on time. So uh, might as well kick off some questions here. Um, how do you go about prioritizing your projects, the ones you're focusing on? You know, you've got gold, you've got copper, you've got, uh, you know, Canada, you've got Portugal. How do, how do you uh, deal with uh, these projects competing for your investment dollars? Yeah, it's a very good question. And this is um, the reason why we have dedicated, for example, exploration manager. We have uh, Robert joining us to focus on BC. And then we have in-country exploration manager, Jose Mario Branco focusing on Portugal. And then to even fine tune more, we're picking the one project for each area. So in BC, that will be Big Frank this summer. That's the only thing, a majority of our dollars will go there. We may spend a little bit on the other projects to keep them in good standing, but the focus will be Big Frank, Portugal, same thing, we have the copper mine there, which we're drilling. Uh, that's our main focus. And the other ones would be joint venture partners and why not, so that we keep our focus. So uh, very good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you did mention keeping projects in good standing. How would you describe the permitting or regulatory environment in Portugal and, and, and maybe compare it to other places that you've worked? You know what, it's amazing to be honest with you. I give you a concrete example as we were preparing to drill this project in Portugal it literally took us probably less than two months to get all the paperwork together from the government but not only that as soon as we approached the local municipality uh, to get their okay to go ahead and drill we've been provided with a free of charge office space in in the town of Barancos which is next to the project um, huge support you know just to encourage local business development and um and again, the, I can act for the same type of support from the government and the government entities that we work with. So it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, companies like Rio Narcia had positive support from this part of the world in the past as well. Correct, yeah. And actually, um, our guy worked with Rio Narcia, comes from that group of companies. So uh, uh, he has worked with Rio Narcia, which was part of Landin's group, right? So, uh, it's great. And, and again, it's not many Canadian companies involved there per se. So we do have a unique opportunity to become a major player. And uh, the other thing we are working on, we are trying to step up the game in Portugal too. So we have our eyes on the Pirate Bell, which is the most prolific mining uh, area of Portugal. So stay tuned for that. We have various things going on right now that would hopefully allow us to make the move into a world-class district, uh, you know, because the projects we have in Portugal are great, but those are more medium-sized type of mines, which are great because they make lots of money. Uh, we are still chasing the big elephant potential in, in Portugal, and that's in the pirate belt. So that's something we are working on right now. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, sort of a follow-up to the first question about prioritizing projects. Uh, can you summarize which projects you're going to be able to move forward yourself, either explore or develop, and then what projects you might be looking to JV? Yes. So for BC, uh, we may be looking to JV uh, Scotty, which sits in the Golden Triangle, um, and possible uh, Gostrom South, which is the Copper Gold Porphyry. Uh, we are in discussions with a few interested parties on that. For Portugal, we have a full set of projects that are called the Borba 2 sets. It's about four projects there. We are already in discussions with groups that are interested to take on those and, um, and advance them. And the way that those are structured, it's, it's a great way to add possibly millions of dollars in, in our treasury uh, as things progress with no dilution, right? And uh, mm -hmm. our costs um, you know, are nowhere close to that to acquire those things. So, it's another way to create shareholder value and also a very important way to keep the focus of the company. Right, right, okay. Um, big Frank drilling, you're, you're, you're working on that now. Are you really targeting high grade gold and silver or is your goal to identify a large copper porphyry on this project? Uh, you know, I'll let Rob maybe comment on that, but uh, this is more of a high grade target. Um, Goldstone South, on the other hand, is more of a porphyry. And I think um, a high grade target is better fit for a smaller company like us, right? So we, we as you know, the porphyry are expensive uh, to drill uh, and we are not there yet. You know, we wanna focus our dollars um, into finding something of a higher grade uh, uh, that has a different type of potential. 
Yeah, um, okay. I'll, if I can just jump in real quick, there's there's such a, a variety of targets there. It's such a well endowed um, area to work in. There's tremendous porphyry targets, but as, as Catalan said, the the high grade is the the obvi obvious starting place, and um, they're they're potentially smaller. Who knows how big they can be? But uh, an easier place to start for sure. For sure. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much, Catalan and Robert, uh, and everybody for joining us today. Up next, we have Seabridge Gold on stream one and Pasofino Gold on stream two after a short break. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs>